Hey, Joe. Hey, Steve. Looks like we've got another episode brewing since we're sitting here. I know. It's really amazing that we're actually managing to do this. I know. All right. So um, we're going to have some good stuff today from the Casco Bay Breeze. And why don't we get started? Okay. That's great. Let's go. Hi, we're Shooting the Breeze, which is a short little program about the Casco Bay Breeze newspaper that was published between 1901 and 1917. And Breeze reporters traveled throughout the islands and wrote lively accounts of seasons' events. For only five cents, you could read stories of fires and shipwrecks and community celebrations and even a few island squabbles. I'm guessing those guys actually spent a lot of time selling advertising as well. Yeah, pretty much that was it. Well, I would say um, I've been looking over the cho- choices for today, and it looks like we've got a lot out here about steamships and um, mostly safety and steamship accidents. Uh, what can you tell me about that? Well, people got around on steamships. There were no cars at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way you came to Casco Bay was on some kind of steamer. The problem was there were multiple companies. There was the Harpswell, there was Casco, there were bunches of them. And every once in a while, they kind of tread on each other's toes. Mm. So um, even though we were had a safety record that looked really good, there were things that happened. Mm. And passengers... Looking at this stuff, there definitely was things that happened. definitely was things. So what do you think? Should we get on board? Yeah, let's get started. <laughs> The following editorial is brought to you by Peaks Island House, Ralph E. Rowe Manager, Peaks Island, Casco Bay, Maine. Now open, famous for years for its liberal management, superb location, and fine shore dinners. Everything modern. Has a special orchestra, accommodates 500. Rates, booklets, and floor plans are on application. Okay, take it away. Safety of steamers. Much has been said lately about unsafe and unseaworthy steamers carrying loads of passengers, often to near proximity to disaster. In treating this subject, the papers have dealt at length with the recent losses of life in New York and would lead us to believe the danger point is always at hand in the majority of boats. This is not the case with the steamers doing the bulk of business in Casco Bay. Strong and staunch, new, all of them, and manned by a set of men who have sailed the bay for years. There is the very minimum of danger in traveling on them. Life preservers, lifeboats, and life rafts are always carried to the full number required, and the strictest of rules as to overloading the steamers are enforced. Fire hose and extinguishers are in evidence, and with the guidance of the most experienced captains, these boats speed on their courses carrying you as safely as if at home. So much for the two larger steamship lines. For the small boats run by private parties or bust-up companies. Hate those guys. Which which flourish for a year and then fall, owing everybody, even the men working on them, we cannot say that much. Among them are two or three questionable craft, one at least of which sunk at her dock not long ago, and the others are being looked at seriously as fit to be retired. Let those who wish to run the risk ride on these boats. But if an accident should happen, remember, if a reader of the breeze, they are not in the class with the boats described above. Oh my goodness, that last line didn't really make any sense at all. I'm not quite sure I understand. I think I understand the, the spirit of it, which is that they are trying to say that the breeze reader would never be caught dead on one of those boats, on one of those bust up boats. Now, speaking of dead, let's go to our next ad, which is for the James A. Martin Undertaker, graduate of embalming. Lady in attendance, 123 Exchange Street, Portland, Maine. Telephone is 123-2. But there were accidents in the bay. Oh, yeah. In fact, I've got one sitting right in front of me. The headline is, Steamer Seabescodian, does that sound right to you? 
I don't know. All right, close enough. We'll, we'll call it Sea Biscodian. Steamer Sea Biscodian and Revenue Cutter Woodbury, badly smashed. What's a revenue cutter? It's a, first of all, a cutter is a, is a sailing ship, so it's not a steamer. So essentially we had a, an accident between a steamship uh, and a, a sailing ship. And so that's what it is. And I think the revenue part is basically a customs enforcement kind of thing or a tax revenue kind of thing. Um, let's see. Accident occurred Monday afternoon in Portland Harbor. The steamer Seabiscodian of the Harpswell line is off duty for a week as a result of a collision in a thick fog off Fort Gorges Monday afternoon about 1.15 o'clock. Captain Morell of the Sea Biscodian says he was making the regular course for the channel mark on his way up the harbor, while Captain Wiley of the U.S. Revenue Cutter Woodbury was also steering for the same point in an opposite direction. The collision came without more than sufficient warning for the 40 passengers on the Sea Biscodian to get out of the way when the cutter crashed into the starboard side, demolishing the upper works including the pilot house. The captain and mate had rather narrow escapes from injury, the captain ringing the stop and reverse bells before jumping out of the pilot house, not a second too soon. A resident of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, who was summering at Ocean View Hotel, Bailey Island, received a cut on the hand, but there was no more serious accident to anyone on board, all of whom were transferred to the cutter, which landed them at the central wharf. The Seabiscodian is seriously damaged above the waterline only, and is expected to be ready for service in a week or so. Our final segment today is brought to you by Dr. Foster, Painless Dentist. How painless do you really think this guy is? I mean, it's 1904. Okay, it says here, teeth, natural gums, are the most perfect and natural that dental science can produce. We do painless work. Our methods are the most approved and our prices are the lowest. Silver fillings, 50 cents. Gold fillings are a dollar. Crown and bridge work, $4 a tooth. Tooth extracted without pain free. See, now that makes me wonder if a tooth extracted with pain, you gotta pay for that one. <laughs> Improved lightweight plates and natural gums, $4. Lowest prices ever in Maine. Again, Dr. Forrest, Painless Dentist, 478 Congress Street, opposite the Preble House. Office hours are 8 to 8, and Sunday hours are 10 to 2. Lady attendant. Just so you know, there's a lady attendant there. Okay, let me throw this to you for the final final segment here. Well, Something you know, a little more lighthearted. A little more lighthearted. There was more to the Casco Bay Breeze than reporting on murder and mayhem, so to speak, or accidents in the bay. Right. Um, there were lots of little events that happened all over the islands, and uh, like one of them was the children's vaudeville at the Gem on a Monday afternoon was one of the events of the season. It was organized by a number of benevolent ladies in Portland in aid of the Home for Friendless Boys in Deering, a worthy and deserving cause, surely. The program included special fancy dances, tableaus, a cakewalk, a short sketch, popular songs, and many other unique features. The patronage was large, and a snug sum was realized. A snug sum. Mm, I like that. And some of the other little things that were there, besides the listing of who came and murder and mayhem and whatever else happened that week on the island there was recipes oh please tell me you have a recipe you know what i know that as i go through this newspaper things are just spread out all over the place like there's no recipe section or no specific sections it's just thrown all together so if you want to find a recipe this in this week's edition you've got to really read the whole newspaper yeah, that's it. the point isn't it so if you want to know how to cook asparagus oh do tell how to cook asparagus. Cut off the tough stalks. Wash the tender parts and tie in bunches again. Place in a saucepan and cover with boiling water. It will take from 20 to 30 minutes to cook it. 10 minutes before taking it up, add a teaspoonful of salt for each bunch. When done, serve on toast with butter sauce 
or just spread with plain butter. You know, asparagus are uh, current right now, so um, Mm. everybody, go get your asparagus and let us know what happened. So I guess we'll catch you next time. Okay, bye for now.